right, everybody. I'm I'm excited about this. And uh, I was gonna I was gonna save the bio for beforehand, but I said, you know, I'm I'm gonna read this while I'm actually talking to him because you know a lot of times I'll I'll do the 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 after the interview's over I'll hop on by myself and say this is who I'm gonna talk to, but I'm really proud to to be saying this and I want I want his face right there I want to be able to see him. So all right, uh, Peter Michael Burke, Junior, Junior, uh, is a simple working blue collar traditional Catholic father and husband. He graduated from Franciscan University of Steubenville in communication arts, TV, radio. Uh, and I, by the way, I, how'd you like it there? Just real quick. I mean, just, <laughs> I'm not even knowing the bio, but I want to know how, how did you like it? You think it was a good program? Yeah, I'll tell you, people have a lot of mixed reviews of Franciscan University, especially nowadays, but they have a very high quality uh, television and radio studio. Um, they produce several shows there that are produ- that are actually put out on EWTN Eternal uh, or television, all that stuff. So very high quality uh, equipment they have there. Many high profile people are there to give advice. Very smart staff, intelligent people who know the game and uh, they prepare you well and people will get the jobs they want to. And a lot of the different media organizations run by the church and and different dioceses and things like that so great program they have over there for sure excellent he's been active in the online catholic world for a long time becoming acquainted with and building a modest network of well-known catholic personalities most notably his eminence cardinal burke who himself and this this blew my mind i've seen a picture though so i knew i knew this okay uh who himself is aware of lcs's existence as a catholic organization and has blessed the flag and seal of the majority of its staff. Peter is the current president of of the League of Christ Sovereign. On a minor note, he also happens to be, and I'm glad he included this minor note, in fact, both of them, uh, but the first one specifically, uh, he is the creator and admin of the moderately popular, and he's a modest guy, listen to this, moderately popular Catholic meme page, SpongeBob memes with with Catholic themes on Facebook. Yeah, and he's one of the former co-hosts of Men with Chess podcast. So, all right, it's going to be real simple, man. I don't want it to feel like commercial esque. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not. I'm here to. I'm here to talk to you, and I want you to talk to me, right? And and this sells itself. I mean, give me a break. I I went through. I'm looking at it. I was bummed. I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna lie. I was I'm bummed sorry. because I. No, no, no. I I'd mentioned. I had mentioned the group before on the show right after we had talked and we and i I said look i've got a guy that i'm bringing on a friend of mine he's got this this group they've they've started expanding on chapters and i was interested and i am right now i'm interested in um the formation of a group right like the paleocrat society used to be back way back in the day you'd get together going and we we did murder mystery things you know we did uh at at houses we had we had feasts and everything we'd get together we'd go and we'd smoke cigars at cigar shops or we'd drink coffee or whatever so we we had all sorts of events uh that we did um but i have a lot of the ladies that tune into the show it does say men's it does say men's group however however um, in recent week in recent weeks uh a few of our we brought up the topic of female auxiliary chapters or whether or not male and female chapters can intermix or that there can be a single chapter with both men and women involved. And the opinion of the board is that we are absolutely open to women being a part of the League of Christ Sovereign. In fact, we already do have women involved in the League of Christ Sovereign who are not at the moment attached to any chapters but wish to start their own. So Mm -hmm. that is one aspect of the website that does need to get edited. We are open totally for women to join. They can join as associate members currently. Um, And as far as chapters go, we've already had a couple women approach us for the formation of chapters. I have approved them in as long as they they can seek out the members who can be a part of it. At the moment, I've interviewed about six different people attempting to start League of Christ Sovereign chapters. The only thing they need to do in order to establish one is they have to bring two other people apart from themselves to start a chapter it's it's minimum of three members one of them has to be the leader the chapter leader and then you're done you set up your agenda you create 
you know, whatever you guys want to do, either weekly or monthly or even daily, however you want to do it. Um, and we just encourage people to attend uh, the major league events if they can, if they're on the east side or if they're even a part of any other closer chapters or just associate members. If they have things going on, go on pilgrimage, go to prayer events, just go to mass together, hang out with each other, become friends, create that bond, that fraternity, that friendship. That's essentially what what it's all about. And it's not no longer just restricted to men because we realize that women want to get involved in these types of things. And we're more than open to that. Yeah, I'm so happy to hear that, man, because, and I, I'm, I'm dead serious because if for no other reason, then league of Christ sovereign is mega dope, dude. <laughs> I mean, it just, I, you go through, I encourage everybody. We're going to encourage everybody. We're going to, yeah, yes, it's, it's not. not and that's, that's actually an important thing. Cause we have a history. Um, LCS didn't start on its own as LCS. It, we were, a group known as the Counter Revolution. That's what we started out as. I don't know if you ever heard of that group. It started around, I think, 2016, 2017 or so. And it got very popular. We had a thousand members, um, mostly in the United States, mostly on the eastern half of the United States. We had a very well spoken, intelligent, magnanimous leader named Marshall Braden Nicholas Plyler. Um, he started it with his small group of friends. They discovered traditional Catholicism and they had major strides and they attracted so many different people but even with the church sort of guiding our principles we were sort of a socio-political movement with catholicism thrown in attempting to kind of be a major catholic voice um in the larger public scene of politics and social policy and things like that but even then things just didn't work out people had a lot of um personality disputes with the leader and with other staff members we attracted some very unsavory characters who you know, supported things like, you know, strange, strange ideas that affect Christian nationalism. Now, I don't necessarily think that is in and of itself is a bad thing mm -hmm. to have Christianity involved, you know, in politics or anything like that. But we also had outright fascists and people who were Nazis yeah. and it's not. And I don't yeah. throw those terms around <laughs> lightly. Yeah. Right. Left us. Yeah. I, I legitimately say these things. They had a lot of these people had. Um, ideas that were very con contrary to the Catholic faith. And so even when the church is involved, it can be extremely difficult to have things directed in a very healthy and clean way. And that's one of the things that we, we in the league are very much attempting to do. We want things to be very wholesome, very healthy. We kind of left politics on the wayside, although not totally abandon it. We still do public displays of uh, you know, prayer in front of like abortion clinics at the March for Life or uh, prayer rosaries that we even had plans before COVID hit to go in front of strip clubs and, and porn shops to pray the rosary silently for these establishments to shut down. It's unfortunate. Well, Peter, here's something that's not unfortunate, man, is League of Christ Sovereign. Um, I, I went to the website and I encourage everybody to go leagueofchrist.org. Uh, you can find right there a Brotherhood of Catholic Men. Uh, also, there are some <laughs> new developments that are taking place, some ladies and stuff that are, are getting involved. I'm really glad to hear about this. But break this down for us. I mean, um, you know, e even just going through the About page, you know, who are we? Personal transformation. Like, what are what are some of the key concepts of this? You know, for like, why why create this? What what is the what is the aim? And what are the means that, that you're you're putting into place as a group, as an organization, to accomplish these? So the League of Christ Sovereign was created initially uh, to keep a certain uh, collection of men who were brought together for a single purpose, because we used to be an older organization that was more focused on sort of socio-political movements with Catholicism thrown in, attempting to affect social policy that would become more favorable uh, towards Catholics and perhaps lead to a Catholic society one day. When that organization sort of fell apart due to different struggles here and there, long story short, we reorganized ourselves as a Catholic fraternity. Now, there are many Catholic fraternities out there that exist already. You have uh, the Knights of Columbus. You have the Holy League, actually, another league of Catholic men that was also endorsed by Cardinal Burke. Um, and many other different organizations of different strains. I guess what makes the League of Christ Sovereign unique in a way is because there's other groups such as TFP. And I've actually wanted to get involved with TFP a long time ago, but they're almost impossible to join. 
you, I guess you have to be of a certain age or you have to be friends with certain people. And we want to be a group that allows anybody really, if they wish, to join. There's no convoluted membership rosters that you have to jump through hoops in order to join. And the three aspects of League of Christ Sovereign life for associates and chapter members, firstly, is personal transformation in Christ. And what tends to happen is that a lot of times people are exposed to the faith online and a lot of people are catechized on their own. The church has failed them. Their families have failed them. Their friends have failed them. And they have to seek out the truth themselves. Perhaps the Holy Spirit reaches out to these people and they have to teach themselves what the faith actually is. And a lot of times different you know, people with different aims will drag you in one direction or the other and send you down crazy paths, maybe like set of contism, which mm-hmm. you've had plenty of experience in your own life. Yeah, um, yeah. So personal transformation in Christ is really the first thing, because we understand that as a league, the one thing you have control over is yourself. That's the one thing you should have control over. That's the one thing you're supposed to be working on every single day of your life. A lot of people can have a lot of passionate ideas about how they think the world should be, how they think the church at large should be. They always focus on the politics of the day. They focus on church politics, the situation, the terrible situation we find ourselves in as Catholics, where so many people disbelieve in the church, and that can get you down. But first and foremost, you have to understand that you have to remain in a state of grace as long as humanly possible. And if you fall out of it, get back into it as soon Mm -hmm. as you can. You have to be personally transformed in Christ for you to affect anything at all. And if you could, even if you fail at everything else in your life, if you are personally transformed in Christ, if you follow the Catholic faith to the best of your ability, that's a win because you're going to go to heaven and you're going to be very happy yeah. With, yeah. With, with, with the situation, even if everything else you did completely fell apart. Um, the second thing is fraternal connection in the faith. So one of the mainstays of League of Christ Sovereign Life is connection to your brothers and sisters in the faith. What has happened with like I mentioned before, Catholics online, is that we have become very isolated from one another. It's very ironic how this technology that's supposed to bring everybody yeah. together has also, <laughs> in effect, isolated everybody into this island, essentially, amongst everyone. It, it's it's very strange how it all works. And it can, especially when you come to the realization that the church is not in a great state at the moment, and you feel as though you are alone in this. You've come to realize that the Catholic Church is important. Its doctrines being pure and taught correctly are extremely important things. And you feel as though you're the only one who thinks this way. And mm-hmm. that can be a very unhealthy mentality. And our, our goal is to bring people together who think similarly in those regards, who hold traditional liturgy. Now, we're not necessarily a TLM only group. We don't turn away people who attend Eastern liturgies or and Byzantine Catholic liturgies, not our not our friends over uh, in the Eastern Orthodox, of course. Yeah. Um, but, but you turn, turn away the people. Novus Ordo people. You turn them away, though. No. Right? Yeah, I'm no, kidding. No, I'm, no. I'm, I'm, I'm joking. You, you said we're not exclusive to the Latin Mass. We also include this, and I was like, oh, I'm. Just, he's teed it up. I'm punting this thing. I'm kidding. I, I felt like I was in a situation for a moment, but I know. That's that's where I started. It, it was when I was in the Novus Ordo. It's when I have when I originally came to the under standing in the realization that I have to take my Catholic faith seriously. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot of the things that were given to me as influences through the Novus Ordo, not necessarily on its own merit, but just because Catholicism is still involved there. um, I I did come to love the mass, even when I was still a person who attended the Novus Ordo exclusively. Now I attend the TLM exclusively, but we don't keep people out if they haven't made, you know, some progress on their journey towards tradition or, what have you, we are a very, I would say, a unite the clans mentality when it comes to mm-hmm. a group. Um, you know, we don't get involved in petty squabbles among Catholics, such, such as, you know, FSSP versus SSPX. We have members on our board of directors who are supporters of the SSS, SSPX. So many S's, different societies thrown in. Yeah, there. right, right. Um, yeah. But others who are very <laughs> FSSP. I'm sort of neutral in regards to all of these different fights. I, like I said, I'm just worried about remaining in a state of grace um, and so on. Now, set of contest, obviously, they can be a, a different bag bag of eggs we have to deal with uh, when it comes no, to that. But no. if, if a set of contest were to become an associate member, I can't really stop them from from doing that because we're not we're not looking for ideological purity on our membership board 
or anything like that. It's really an issue of just encouraging people to practice the Catholic faith as best to their ability. And that's what when the third uh, aspect of LCS life comes to be involved, where uh, we encourage people to practice their faith publicly when they can. So one of the main things we do as a group, uh, one of our main league events is we as a board go to the March for Life every single year. Um, yeah. stand in solidarity with other Christians, other Catholics, other groups from all and even people who aren't Christians. It's crazy how many different kinds of people are attracted to the March for Life every year. We stand in solidarity for them with one of the most object against the most objectively evil thing in society, and that is abortion, in my opinion. Um, yes, I've been in. Uh, you don't even have to qualify that. You don't even qualify. It's not. It's not your opinion, man. It is just straight up wicked evil, demonic evil. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's just a fact. I, I have. I have to. I have to qualify everything on the show uh, is part of the deal with MOC that says at the beginning these views are the. It's an opinion show. Things like that. I think with this right here. He's like, you don't need to say opinion on that. It's just true. <laughs> it's like, so you're good, but man. It's true. Yeah. And I and I have been aware of that fact since I was very yeah. young. Before I felt as if I even fully came to tradition, or even even before I truly valued my own Catholic faith, I was raised by my parents to, and they told me that abortion is wrong, abortion is evil, always stand against it, and that's mm -hmm. been a mainstay of my life ever since I was young. Um, and that's one of the issues that we in LCS do rally around. Um, every single year, another main league event, we go on pilgrimage um, at the it's called the pilgrimage for restoration, where we pray for the restoration of the church, restoration of dogma, of doctrine, of people practicing the faith in an, in an authentic manner of uh, for the return of tradition in our lives, things of that nature. These are the types of things that the League of Christ Sovereign, Sovereign stands for. And we have a very young membership where there's no age uh, limit to who can join, but it seems that we've tended to attract mostly young people, especially young Catholic men uh, to the, to our fold essentially, but we're not barring women or anything like that. If you want to start a women's chapter that please, please message me. Let me know if you want to start a women's chapter. Um, if you want to start a men's chapter, please let me know. We want to get these things off the ground and we want to get started in really bringing holiness to people because a lot of the different groups out there, they may exist, but sometimes they don't have something to offer everybody. I thought about joining the Knights of Columbus, but I guess the image there is maybe a lot of older guys, maybe old boomers. Nothing wrong with that, I suppose. But um, <laughs> I, and I know I know a lot of very, very, very like some guys. old boomers, <laughs> some, some yeah. boomers boomer with their boomerisms. But uh, no, but there's a lot of people in the Knights of Columbus. It's true. Yeah. I actually yeah. spoke yeah. to someone yeah. uh, the other week um, who was a representative from them. We had a we had a very good uh, networking session, and. Uh, Essentially, for me, I felt as if that wasn't my scene. Yeah. And I felt I had to be a part of something that seemed a bit more fresh, a bit more new, a bit more of the times, um, understanding the needs of Catholic people now. Um, and that's what the League of Christ Sovereign intends to do, is that it wants to bring people together, you know, go on pilgrimage and just be friends with one another. Realize that you, you guys out there who understand that the faith is important and you want to integrate it into your life into your families, into society at large, things have to start small. Just like, um, uh, uh, I, I believe it was Pope Leo XIII who wrote uh, his encyclical, uh, Rerum Novarum. And that's an encyclical that the League highly um, relies upon to sort of give us the inspiration for things going forward, where he encourages Catholics to come together in organizations amongst themselves to affect the common good. Um, it's yes. mostly talking yes. about economics and workers and things, but it also works for Catholic fraternities and spiritual organizations as well. We are a lay fraternity. Uh, a lay fraternity. We don't uh, have too many priests involved, although we do have our old spiritual director who still gives us advice every now and then. Um, and of course, we have uh, the blessing of Cardinal Burke. He really uh, thought our organization uh, seemed to be on the right path. He blessed us at the March for Life. We we caught him uh, marching. Yeah. Uh, and we're just, <laughs> there he is. There's the man. Yeah. There's the guy. We love yeah. this guy. And he was able to give us his blessing. He blessed the flag that's uh, actually hanging behind me. And uh, and it, it's, it's incredible. He was actually the one who presided over my wife's confirmation. He came to our parish. My wife was confirmed by Cardinal Burke because um, uh, our priest there is friends with him. He has these great connections with uh, his eminence. And um, when his eminence met my father at a seminar prior to the confirmation, um, he saw his name tag on his shoulder. It said Peter Burke Sr. 
And he looked at that and he said, you wouldn't happen to be Peter Burke Jr.'s father, would you? And my father was flabbergasted at this. He's like, how on earth do you know yeah. my son? Yeah. And when my father told me the story, I was flabbergasted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was like, man. He's like, he's twice. How does yeah. he remember me? I have, he's got like a memory of an elephant or something. <laughs> um, but uh, yes, yeah. so we, we do try and find the connections to, to, you know, get the blessings we need from higher members of the church because you need that. You need those blessings. And as far as blessings go, um, we do make sure that Christ sovereign is at the head of this organization. We view Christ, yes. the King sovereign as sort of the inspiration of this organization. Um, and that's essentially the gist of, of what we try and do. Get people. I love, I love this man. I love it right here. You even going back personal transformation part, you know, regular prayer, right? Right, right out of the gate, man. Cause that, that's become something for me. And you've, you've, we've been friends for a while. You followed my work, man, for a lot longer. In fact, than most people, I mean, you've been around, you know, you've seen me through many phases, in fact. And right. one of the things I've learned over time, and it's the, it's the school of hard knocks. It's like, I'm not proud to say this, I wish I had not learned that way. <laughs> I wish I could get in the old DeLorean and just zoom back and, and take care of the business. Right. But but I am I I made it where I am and, and at the core of what we do now with Paleocrat Diaries now is prayer. That's why if, if people are not following us on Telegram, the Wolfpack chat, they don't see it. We we have we have prayer requests basically every day at this point. And that's a small number of people. I mean we're not Telegram for one, I mean, I, you know, there's a lot of people that are like, I don't want another app or I don't know what this Telegram thing is. But the people that go there and have joined and said, look, these are the prayer requests, the prayer requests now that are popping up underneath the videos that I make. So even in the comments, a guy is having a, his, his wife probably having the baby today, okay, <laughs> today or tomorrow. Right. They're saying, oh, this is, we're supposed to have the baby in two days. And I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> and he's like, please pray, Paleo, you know, kind of thing. And so... Um, you know, but seeing the centrality of that and that it's not just political action and, and it, all political action, all cultural action, uh, you know, no matter what you do with your Catholic action, that at the core of that is prayer and not just prayer by yourself. And I, I love the part about fraternity. Men are not radical individualists and those with whom we keep company have a marked, a marked influence on us. The devout Catholic man, therefore, must have the fraternal support of other Catholic men. You see, you talk about camaraderie, uh, natural uh, natural competition, and support that flows from it are invaluable to the growth of the individual and the ability and in the ability of men to come together for common goals. And I said yes. And you look at that, and you say individual prayer, fraternal aims and ambitions, saying. What is our vision? What do we see? Christ the King. Okay, gotcha. All power, all authority. Gotcha. Every area of our life. Gotcha. Where does it start? And right, the very first part, regular prayer. Regular prayer. Absolutely. And, and, I, and I and you know, love it. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of different Catholic groups that have appeared over the years that focus on maybe the political side of things, trying to start grandiose movements, people marching in the streets by the thousands, maybe busting down the doors of, of the White House or Congress, which I guess happened in some small form, but certainly not yeah. under a right. uh, Catholic yeah. guy. Yeah, right. we don't want to open up. We don't want to open up that scab right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, the FBI is already watching my junk, man. Yeah. I, although they're probably I, getting I, bored of me at this I, point. I, I've seen that episode with the uh, with yeah, the FBI yeah. topic. That's incredible stuff. But I uh, know, man. You know, yeah. a lot of times traditional Catholics can get very distracted by the uh, political question, and I feel as though they can, they tend to ignore the ordinary. And and that's actually something I wanted to bring up. I have a book here of a saint that I am reading about. His name is Saint Gabriel Pacenti. Yeah. And St. Gabriel Pacenti is actually the patron saint of the League of Christ Sovereign. He is the, the, the patron saint of our organization. And he was a passionist monk in Italy, I think, during the 1860s. Um, and he isn't some saint that did some major event in history of some sort like St. Louis IX or St. Joan of Arc. or Obviously, great saints to emulate, people we could always learn things from. St. Gabriel Pacenti is a patron of the youth. He, he's officially a patron of the youth, of 
clerics or seminarians and I guess unofficially of pistoliers because yeah, man. Yeah. The gun <laughs> pistoliers. And what a cool, what a cool word. Say that again, man. So that we can, we can all just enter that into our, our vocabulary from here out. The patron saint of pistoliers. What a, what an amazing. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, as I read about his life, all of these different aspects of his um, coming to faith, he, he viewed an image of Our Lady, a, a, an Eastern icon of Our Lady, and was uh, brought to tears, essentially, and he wanted to enter into religious life. He abandoned his life as a uh, wealthy son of an um, Italian bureaucrat, I think in the Papal States or something like that, before the whole revolution happened to unite the country. However, that whole history plays out. Um, what's great about St. Gabriel Pacenti is his ordinary faith, his very achievable virtue that he has that turned him into an amazing person. From the outside, you wouldn't necessarily see somebody that great, just another passionless monk who owns nothing, walking around quietly praying to himself. But on his interior, his mind was always on God. Mm -hmm. Now, I certainly cannot hold a candle at least at the moment. I hope, hopefully one day I can yeah. even come close to something like that. But um, this is the kind of person that we want people in the league and people in general, Catholics in general, to emulate. It's, it's almost in the same vein as G.K. Chesterton, a person who really elevated ordinary life of people as something that is actually great. You don't have to view yourself mm -hmm. as some type of leader of a major movement to say that you are serving God's purpose in society. It really is an issue of if I can get two or three people to have a rosary together, that's a mm -hmm. win in my book. If I can get just a couple people to get together and pray with one another or even just affect their personal spiritual life on an individual level, the League of Christ Sovereign is serving its purpose. And we are serving Christ in society because we are the ones who go out into the world and affect other people through the light that we shine on others through the message of the gospel, through our practice of the faith and all those types of things. We have our families. We encourage people to please enter religious life, become a priest, get married, do all these amazing things and serve the church in your vocation the way you're supposed to do it. Um, you don't necessarily have to go out with, you know, banners waving. Now, of course, we have our banners, you know, yeah, right. for the yeah. purposes that we have them for. Yeah. But that's not the focus of this. The focus of this really is to get us together and pray with one another and to affect our spiritual lives in such a wholesome manner that it can actually produce some tangible good. I don't have to be the president of the world, of the country, or a senator, or or start some political fling in order to make a difference. If those things can come up for you, fine. But ultimately, I think the things that I can focus on, because I have a wife, I have a child, these are the people's right. lives that I can affect directly. I consider the people on the director's board of the League of Christ Sovereign to be my best friends. I think these are friendships that are going to last me a lifetime. And I want to share that with other people. I want other people to build those relationships with, other, with one another. Um, and I think as long as we can keep that humble camaraderie, I believe that God, through our guardian angels, through the guardian angel that he has hopefully appointed to the League of Christ Sovereign, um, through St. Gabriel Vicente and all the other saints that we hold as our patrons, to bless us continuously so that we can affect real change in society in the way he decides that we can or should you know dude that's music to my ears bro. it's music to my heart because i'm serious because you know I, i've always been the kind of guy you know that with all the work i've done whether it was whether it was tv or, or radio or writing you know i i i like reading books that have fancy words in them i like reading these really antiquated things that are really big with kind of curious fonts and stuff and everything i like that um you know if a book is a thousand pages long i'm like that sounds great to me um and people get you know intimidated by that and but but i've i've always wanted to take those things and to not just learn them for myself to get puffed up and be like well look i know some fancy words or i've read some big books but i've made it kind of a mission in my life to say i want to make this accessible where where i'm able to to have have fun with this and and convey these ideas in such a way that regular folks when I, and i coined them the the johnny q and sally sue's right johnny q sally sue catholic that's who we're talking about and say those folks that are working the grind every day 
They're they're you know at the business or they're at home. They got some kids. They're they're waking up early to get in their prayers. They're going to bed after a long day. It's really tough, and you got to help with school. Maybe they're even homeschooling. Whatever it is, that it it is a very demanding thing. And sometimes, you know, they don't have the time to to you know read you know. 1600 page books <laughs> they might not have the time i don't know or the interest or anything like that but yet they wish that they knew some of these things they wish they knew some of those insights there are questions that they have and concerns that they have and a lot of times there's like this this elitism which is good right it's fine perfectly catholic this kind of aristocracy that's natural even but that it kind of is like stuck in the tower and, and I used to think that that was just about um, uh, academic pursuits and just about epistemological matters, things that, that big fancy words and all that. And I said, sometimes it's about prayer. And I said, sometimes it's how do you get the lessons of the monastics? How do you get the lessons of, of people like uh, St. Uh, Hildegard or St. Teresa of Avila? or St. John of the Cross, how do we get those insights, right? What, what is it? Is it the cloud of, is it the cloud of unknowing? What is it called? I forget. Anyway, oh, I, it, how do we well. get the Sorry. book? I'm having a brain fart. <laughs> it's, it's okay. How do, how do we get, I, I obviously did too. We're, we're both brain farting it up right now. So <laughs> the thing is, is like, how do we get those, the, the, the depth of those lessons about mental prayer, the centrality of mental prayer, the monastic disciplines, including fraternity, how do we get that in such a way that it has the primacy in our own lives? Because it's from that that we will be able to best, number one, even have just the confidence of facing the ordinary things in our day and realizing that that's truly what God wants us to do. He made us for that. He made us for that. Not everybody is called to be a priest or a, a nun you know, nobody's, <laughs> most people in the universe are not. So right. what do you then do? And I, I've, it's been kind of a mission for me. And so to see something like this, and I, that's why I got excited about Exodus 90. But, but, but this, <laughs> this here, buddy, this is another level. And, and so I know we've gone for a while and I know that we could in fact go for quite a while, but I, I want I want to, to ask you um, about two more things, okay? Number one, um, the traditional family, okay? Mm -hmm. um, how, how does, because that's a big thing for, for people who tune into the show, and it's something that we're dealing with as a culture that's super wicked bad, the destruction of it, constant pressures from all around, um, hardly anything propping up anything remotely close to what Catholicism would say regarding men and women, how does the organization or, or how do you believe the organization should um, help to strengthen that and help to give uh, men and women not only kind of a better sense of their identity and place, but e even even opportunity with others? Well, I'll tell you, um, the, the gentleman I was actually speaking with the other day, um, he works with the knights of columbus and we all know what the knights of columbus do they provide uh life insurance for catholics almost you know on a uh, like on a daily basis billions of dollars things of that nature now i'm not saying that the league of christ sovereign in any way shape or form has resources such as that but right. i think because the second major aspect of the league is networking we are a fraternal but also a, a networking organization of catholics where we try and bring everybody's resources together hey do you need help with this hey i can do that for you or i know a guy who can do this for you and that is one of the aspects of how we want to grow as an organization so that we can provide the resources necessary for catholic families to actually reach out to one another because of the fact we are such a large portion of the country we're in now the united states like what is it, like 65 million of us here now i'm not saying every single one of us have our heads on straight when it comes to the faith um but when it comes to the traditional family, obviously that is extremely important for there to be a man, a woman, and children in the home, or at least a man and a woman always taking care of the children. Um, as far as the league is concerned, we definitely support families getting involved in this. We want to get any any type of Catholic action 
that bring people together to encourage them to live in the most authentic Catholic manner possible is really something that we're really all about. Most of the people who are on the director's board, in fact, are either engaged, are married, and have kids. I think only two of two of the people on the director's board are single at the moment. Um, so this really is a group of families. When you get right down to it, the people that I know who are involved, um, a lot of the people who I've interviewed who want to be chapter leaders who are attempting to start their own chapters, the majority of them married men, engaged men. One of them just had a son uh, just about a month or two ago. And I really do believe that the league has the potential to bring a lot of Catholic families together. I'm very excited and happy about the types of uh, personalities and people that we have attracted uh, to this organization. It, it really it warms my heart a lot to know that we're attracting good people, that we're encouraging people to be good people. And mm. um, I suppose that's really all I could say on on, on the topic of uh, traditional families. But uh, it, it is definitely a pillar of our, of our organization for sure. I love it. I love it. And, and, you know, if people want to see more about this, I, I implore you, in fact, and, and it'll be in the description below the video, of course, uh, we'll have the link for that league of And, uh, and go and, and read also the part about uh, when you're at the, when you're at the website, go check out the about, go check out the different categories. They have a renewal of Catholic culture and, uh, the traditional worldview that we have, um, and the, the way the proper ordering of society, and and you can see, I, I love I love the, I love the way that these things work in tandem, Peter. I, I love how, uh, and you can see this reflected even on the website that that the proper ordering of things with the individual, if you have it in a proper order, with Christ as King, starting with prayer working its way out with other people, realizing we're not islands, balancing the difference between radical individualism and radical collectivism and saying, here's how this works, and placing the emphasis on the church and, and the cultural advancement of the kingdom and saying, look at how this all works together. Look at the flow of this, the beauty of it, the symmetry of it. I encourage people to go and look at that and, and to, think, to think how you may fit into it. And how this could benefit you and benefit other people even through you. And maybe it's not for you, but maybe you know somebody you say, this literally sounds like something my boy or my girl would be down with. <laughs> like, And if so, share it with them. So, in, and to do that, how, how are ways that people can, can reach us? The last thing, how are ways that people can not only reach out to connect with you, but, but, but to share uh, beyond the website. Cause I, I have the website here. Okay. League of Christ, which is, what a what a yeah, that's a fantastic name. It's kind of like meaning of Catholic. How did he get that? You know, at League of Christ. You think, it man, took us be a couple of weeks actually to to come up with it. We we discussed it <sighs> for di for like several weeks, different combinations of letters and names and titles <laughs> and things of that. And that's what we eventually came up with was a league of men, a league of people, maybe even a league of different Catholic organizations coming together under a single, uh, you know, sort of mentality to really promote the social kingship of Christ in society and most primarily in our lives, which in turn affects wider society. Genius. But How do people want, connect with you, you, bro? Get, yeah. If So uh, we're mainly uh, active on Facebook and Instagram. Those are our, our two main um, uh, social media sites. If you want to get in contact with us, you can email us um, either through direct message on those uh, websites or you can email me directly at my personal league email at one, the number one league of Christ at gmail.com. Um, also, there are several emails available. If you want to message the other directors, if they're closer to you, you can go to the um, get involved page on the league of Christ.org. Go there on the about and look for um, the different locations of the different directors there and their, their league emails are available if you need to get a hold of them as well. So there's emails to get in touch with us available on the website, as well as our Facebook and Instagram. You could always direct message me. We always check them. I get in touch with anybody who messages us and uh, we can always work on a one-on-one -on -one basis. You don't have to go through several different pages in order to get a hold of us. If you message us directly, we're gonna see it. We're gonna get in touch with you. 
Dude, I love it. I love it. And and it's not even a question as to whether or not I, I full-throatedly endorse this. I mean, it's just without a doubt. You know, I can, I can imagine there'd be people that i bring on. Yeah, you're you're good, dude. It's already it's already done, dude. It's got it's got the seal of approval, right? We're gonna have to come up with this like fancy seal, and I'll get the wax and everything, and blah, and put it on there. Yeah, and he's gonna <laughs> burn it on the foreheads of everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it's branded at this point. So, but I but I'm I'm pumped about it. I'm excited that I was able to talk to you in this way, right? And and um, it's an honor, in fact, to know you. And I can say that between just the two of us, right, heart to heart, to say it's been a real, it's been a privilege, in fact, to be your friend. And it's an honor. And I, I, I mean that, that, you know, through the years, the, the various times you, you would talk to me, the various, and the stuff you've seen me through, even the way that I would talk, I can only imagine at times it was terrible. It was, it was maybe heartbreaking or miserable but you but you st- you you've remained my friend and and I I I truly appreciate that the all weather friend and the person in that that now at this point that we can pray with each other that we can be in fraternity with each other and encourage the same mission with the same vision and the same heart to me I I am it's just it's it's God I can't say God at his greatest, but God at his greatest for me, right? God at his greatest for me, the kind of stuff that he does, whether it's with my kids and things like that, whether it's with the school and the church and things like that, or whether it's stuff with friends like this, it's, it's God just blowing my mind left and right. And I, I'm just so thankful. And so I want to thank you for joining us today. I'll, as I said, I'll, I'll have all this information available for people because I want them to reach out to you. And, and I'll, I'll include that, in fact, for more than just this one episode. A lot of times it might be something that, you know, we just tuck down there and it's for one episode. But I, I'll, we'll figure out ways to promote this because I want people to join. I, I love that there was a, a group you said that started on a, a college campus. Real quick, where was that? If so, you don't mind me asking. Yeah. Holy Cross College in uh, Indiana. I, I forget the the specific name. I, I think I think it's affiliated with uh, Notre Dame out uh, out in Indiana. But but of course, Holy Cross College itself is a very small campus. Um, only I don't even think a thousand people who go to the school. Um, but we have a nine man chapter out in northern Indiana at Holy Cross College. That's headed headed by um, our chapter leader out there, Evan Gallagher. Fantastic gentleman. I mean, he has a very active, very uh, good group of guys out there who just kind of spontaneously appeared out of nowhere. And they, you know, because we, we are a very small organization at the moment. We are intending to grow, but um, their numbers essentially doubled ours by the time they had shown up. And um, <laughs> you know, very good group yeah. of guys out there. Yeah. Um, but I, I do want to say that, and, and obviously, we any other college campuses that uh, people think that we can grow into, please look into it. Please uh, message me, and we can talk about those types of ways to organize. Um, but I want to say, and, and you know, t- to the audience, um, I, I want to say that Jeremiah Bannister, he's an amazing fellow because I've been following his content for a very long time. Mm. And um, like I mentioned before, I essentially had to catechize myself in the faith. Um, that's not to say my parents didn't tell me about Christ, didn't raise me as a Catholic. I am a cradle Catholic, and they did a, a, a wonderful job. But because of the fact the church itself has failed to catechize people in the proper way for many, many uh, decades, probably the last hundred years or so, it's just been a terrible situation. Jeremiah Bannister's content as a Catholic apologist, as, as a person who had has zeal for the faith, was instrumental for me in my formation as a Catholic. And I have to say that much of his work that he did in the early days of YouTube and even today has in in many ways led to the kind of person that I am today. Um, you know, I, I, I will say I do remember the days when Jeremiah um, had many struggles in his life, had, you know, immense, he had to deal with immense suffering in his family, um, with his friends, and had a crisis of faith. But I'll tell you, there's very few things in life that make me weep, that make me cry as a, as a, as a man, as a gentleman. But when I hear stories about men who come to Christ, who embrace Christ, who wake up to the fact that Christ is their friend, he is their father, he is their God, 
He is the person that changes everything about their life, that makes it whole again, that makes it wonderful again, that gives joy to the joyless when they're experiencing the most terrible, heartbreaking things in life. And when Jeremiah Bannister came back to the faith, it was probably one of the happiest times I had ever felt because I saw a man who had such zeal, who had lost it and then found it again. And that is an inspiration to anybody. And I am extremely honored myself to finally be a part of his setup here, his show, his 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 own content. I, I, I almost feel like that's a badge of honor for me, something that I can hang my hat on. It's just another amazing thing I've been able to experience as a person in the Catholic sphere of things, because we're a very small world, really, when it comes to the Catholic online scene. Everybody seems to know everybody when you really get down to it. And I'm very happy to know Jeremiah Bannister, the paleocrat, the legendary one uh, behind the <laughs> microphone. And uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that you brought me on and was able to talk and allow me to give my spiel about what we're all about. And, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm very excited that you're excited about, uh, you know, the league and all those types of things. Well, dude, thank you. Thank you for all of that. And, uh, and, and just so people know, I did not promise to pay him for a single word that he just said. <laughs> this is all just people are like, come on, these guys are buttery at this point. It's but, like, look, but we, I, we know he, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm tossing a quarter over to you right now. Yeah, we're tossing quarters. But I just, yeah, I appreciate it. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for your time. I'm grateful for your friendship. I'm grateful for all of the things that you just said and all the great work that you're doing. And I'm grateful even in advance for all of the amazing things that I am confident, confident without any shadow of a doubt that the League of Christ Sovereign is going to do. So thank you so much. And uh, we'll be back with you, bud. <laughs> You'll be back. So we're gonna we're gonna keep in contact. We're gonna keep people up to date with things that are going on with you. And hopefully uh, we can see this thing grow more and more and more, uh, actualizing the the parable and the, the description in the scripture about the, about how the kingdom grows, you know, the mustard seed and the leaven and how it spreads throughout the batch until the whole thing is growing. And you have a kingdom with princes and kings coming in and out and in and out bringing their gifts. And, right. you know, large trees with birds making their, their homes within them and singing songs and that this sort of thing that that League of Christ Sovereign can be part of that. And it can be that God would, would find it in his great wisdom to to incorporate that humble organization with a humble a humble president right now. Right. Uh <laughs> and just and that we can not, be part of that. Not brag, of course, but uh... no, it's no. You're 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 legit. It's good. So I'm grateful, bud. So all right, we'll be we'll be back, of course. Make sure to check out all the links below, and uh, keep coming back to Patreon.com/slash Paleocrat Diaries for more great interviews just like this. I wanted to make people dream bigger thoughts.